This is FriendQuest. Hey everybody, welcome back. Thank you for joining me. Oh, dang it, pumping the microphone, sorry. Uh, this is FriendQuest, we are playing uh, King's Quest V. Um, we are in the, uh, we're basically in the final act here. Um, I'm actually hoping on uh, finishing this up this episode, so. Uh, we uh, just stumbled upon a... What, uh, what what seems to be like a Cinderella type character. She's a servant girl in in Mordak's castle. Mordak is the evil wizard that has stolen our family. Um. So yeah, we've just uh, we've just handed this uh, this girl a uh, locket that had pictures of a uh, of an older couple in it. And uh, uh well, let's uh, let's see what happens. <laughs> It was gone for good. I lost it on the island just after I was brought here by Mordak. You wouldn't believe me even if I told you. But tell me, who are you and how did you come to be here? My name is Princess Katima from the Kingdom of the Green Isle. My father, the king, employed the horrible Luthier who befriended Mordak. When Mordak saw me, he immediately wished to marry me and bring me here. Naturally, I refused. And my father agreed with me. But our refusal angered him so much that he stole me here anyway and put me to work as a scullery girl. He says he will never let me go. That a scullery girl I will remain until I agree to marry him. But the thought revolts me. What am I to do? Don't worry. I'm here to save my family from the evil wizard. He's got them here someplace imprisoned inside a glass bottle. If I can manage to rescue them, then of course I wouldn't forget you either. I know the glass bottle you're talking about. It's in Mordak's laboratory upstairs. Keep quiet about my presence. I think this will be the most difficult part of my journey. I may not survive it. I would never give you away. And I will help you in any way I can, kind sir. Okay, so that is Princess Cosima from the Land of the Green Isles. She has been kidnapped by the wizard Mordak and has been basically made into a slave until she agrees to marry him, which she very much does not want to do. Um, so, uh... Dang. Uh, dang. That sucks. All right, so yeah, we're gonna we're we're gonna save or try to save our family, but in the meantime, you know, we're also gonna try and save her too. You know, if we could maybe if we could find a way to get out of here alive, we'll try to bring her with us. But for right now, we gotta we gotta lay low. Um, I don't think there's much she can do to help us right now. Uh, what the heck else is in here? Graham surveys Mordak's kitchen in disgust. It is an untidy mishmash of dirty pots, jars with unidentified contents, rags, and assorted junk. Even with all that, Graham can see nothing that interests him. Princess Cosima, whom Graham now knows to have been stolen by Mordak from the Kingdom of the Green Isles, looks pleased to see him. She smiles in friendship. Okay, so yeah, she trusts she trusts us now, and she's hopeful that we'll save her. Which we'll try to do. All right, let's uh, let's let's do this. Okay. So. This is Mordek's. Oh, yes, Mordek's castle, and that's his pipe organ, I guess. Uh, all right, let's do this. Graham watches in horrified fascination as the grotesque organ begins to magically play an eerie tune, all by itself. <laughs> yeah. So, organ playing stuff all by itself. Like all like this, there's like snake heads and stuff up here. 
Nice. Alright. Good job, Morgan. Ah! Goodbye, King Graham of Daventry. <laughs> Alright, so that obviously has alerted <laughs> Mordak, and he has come to kill us. So he force choked us, and we're dead. Mordak shows no mercy. Dang. All right, so I wanted to do that just to show you that, like, you know, basically anything and everything has a chance to just alert him and he'll show up and kill us. Or he might just show up and kill us just because. Um, you know, we might just get unlucky and he just shows up for funsies. Uh, okay. There is one, there, there is another random element that we need to keep an eye out for and I'll, I'll, I'll point it out when it happens. Uh... Actually, there's two things that we need to keep an eye out for. Let's see. Anything going on in here? A massive dining table has been placed before a large, ornate fireplace. So, like, what, what the heck goes on here? He seems like a pretty solitary guy, but, like, he's got these big... Like, this big, uh, conference room, basically. Big dining table. All right, let's keep going. Okay, so. If you remember from way back when we were getting our fortune told by Madamushka, uh, in the, uh, in the, in the, um, spying glass or whatever, the crystal ball, we saw Mordak, like, threatening to feed our son to a cat. The cat being his brother, who was turned into a cat by our son Alexander. And there he is, just chilling, like a cat does. But because he is a cat who was once a human, he's probably intelligent and knows who we are and knows that we're intruders and will go and warn our good friend Mordak. Um, you. Whoa. How did you get here? Oh! I have journeyed far, over land and sea. Never mind. Your journey is now over. So, yeah. There you have it. Uh, yep. <laughs> Goodbye, King Graham of Daventry. That's it. <laughs> so, at any point during this next part, uh, the cat can show up at any point and basically ruin our day. Okay, yeah. You're choking me. I get it. And we're dead. And that's it. So, yeah. This is why getting the hab getting into the habit of saving often and making sure you're not saving over, you know, recent saves and make sure you name everything in something that you remember. I mean... <sighs> This game gets so, like like these kind of games get frustrating because like okay so yeah the cat's not there now so we're fine so I'm even gonna save right now basically every step of the way just to make sure that we don't get caught by that cat so no cat ah oh ah, oh god Jesus scared the crap out of me <sighs> okay in that case this is this is supposed to happen. I just completely forgot when it happens. <laughs> uh, Alright, so yeah. Magical, crazy, scary-ass blue beast. Ooh, there's a mouse. Graham finds himself in a dirty, dingy cell somewhere below Mordak's castle. Graham can see a small, moldy piece of cheese just inside the mouse hole. Let's grab that cheese. Graham can almost reach the piece of cheese inside the mouse hole, but finds his hand too large to reach very far. All right, so we can't get the cheese with our hand, but we got this little fish hook, so we're going to grab that cheese. Got to get that cheese. There, got it. The fish hook did the trick in retrieving the piece of cheese from the mouse hole. All right, so we got some cheese. So let's change this to cheese. 
but we're still stuck in a dungeon. Like, he tell he like opened up a portal in this in the wall here. Like that blue creature is so terrifying. I have no idea what it's supposed to be. It's got like big ears. I always kind of picture it as like a giant mouse or something. Oh. Hello. Hi. What? Oh, Princess Cosima, where did you come from? From the labyrinth. I spend a lot of time down here, you know, with my friends. Friends? Yes. Like Zink and Sam. I don't know if you ever saw Sam or not. Anyway, I found this blue stone once that led here. To this cell. Now come on, you'd better get out of here. So she makes reference to Dink, which is that giant beast that we gave the tambourine to, and then she mentions Sam, and I'm not sure who Sam is. Definitely sounds like something that you're not required to meet up with. Maybe she's referring to the blue beast. I don't know. Um, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna follow her. All right, so yeah, uh, this leads back into the maze, but we gotta we gotta follow her along. Now this part's a little confusing because again, this maze is just a little weird. They, yeah, they turn they turn it into like a three D like dungeon, like crawl sort of thing. Uh, so she went to the left there, right? But what? Well, because she was like forward into the left, we gotta go forward and then left. Uh, where'd she go? Frick. Crap. Oh crap. Oh no. Oh crap. Oh, I'm uh. <sighs> All right. Okay, wait, let me let me load. Let me load. <laughs> let me load. All right, so we got the cheese. Now I just got to wait for it to show up. All right, yeah. I guess I must have taken too long. She will lose track of her if we if we wait around too long. All right, come on. Gonna walk around for a little bit. There she is. Hello. What? From the left. Yes. All right. Let's get the heck out of here. Oh crap! Come on. All right, there she goes. There she goes. All right, then to the left, and then we go forward and left. Then we go forward again. Yeah, see, it's really confusing. Because it looks like she's just going left, but you're not supposed to go left or whatever. Or right. Or, gosh, get my directions confused. Okay, come on. Come on. There we go. Alright, so she left right back to the pantry. Got saved by the lady. And here we are. Okay. So, same as before, but um, in uh, in Sierra fashion, uh, we aren't gonna get so lucky twice. Um, so we have to be we have to be better prepared next time that blue guy shows up. <sighs> I just oh my, <laughs> I just hope that cat doesn't show up again. God, okay, no, you know what? Uh, yeah, I got I got to do this. I got to keep saving. All right, so we'll we'll place end of act one. We'll just keep saving over no cat until we get through this. Okay, no cat. Ah, ah, oh, God. <sighs> Look at that thing. What, what, like, what is that? It's got the, like, backwards knees and, like, a giant head. It's so terrifying. It just shows up out of nowhere. Okay. All right, L like with the Yeti, uh, scary beasts are best dealt with, with food. Uh, so we got cheese and we got peas. So I'm gonna drop peas on them. What? What? Oh, come on. Well, I guess 
we're screwed. A mouse. Is there a way to, like... The stone can't be budged anymore. All right, well, I guess we just restore. Dang it. All right, the cat's there. So we got to restore again. Try again. No cat. All right, let's stand over here and hopefully the blue guy will show up. Yep, there he is. Okay. All right, tripped him up with the peas. That's that. A large beast lies stunned on the floor. What the heck is he? It's just a giant blue beast. Who, who the frick knows? It's terrifying. It scares the crap out of me. But he's clumsy, so whatever. The heck. Graham gapes at an odd figure of a bird-like yet reptilian-like woman. Like a snake bird lady with a lantern or something. Graham looks in astonishment around this strange foyer filled with an assortment of bizarre oddities. Graham looks in astonishment. All right. Not much else we can do in here, so let's continue on. Uh, that's real spooky. Okay, so we still got no cat. Uh, this is weird. The thought of lying on that horrible bed totally revolts Graham. Oh shit, the cat. Okay. All right. Um I think I think at this point we can deal with the cat. Now that now that we got we've taken care of the blue thing. Oh, cats. Cats like fish. So we're going to throw that fish and we're going to catch him in the bag. Nice. All right. It wouldn't be wise for Graham to carry the cat around. Oh, okay. All right. So, yeah, we caught the cat in the bag, and we're just going to leave him there. And uh, hopefully that's that's that. Uh, so, yeah, that's supposed to immobilize him and keep him from uh, telling on us. All right. So, uh, okay. We are... Ugh. What do we do? A large tome lying open upon a corner desk attracts Graham's curiosity. All right, yeah. Book. Hmm, this looks interesting. Graham wonders what the symbols mean. King Graham, heavy of heart, searches for numerous books of various sc All right. Many books and scrolls line the shelves of Mordak's library. As Graham looks them over, however, he finds them mostly unintelligible. Many books and scrolls line the shelves. Okay, so this is the book that we were looking for for this next part. Um, bunch of there was just like a bunch of symbols and stuff in there, but uh, th those will come up later. So this next part, uh, it's just another one of those like, how were you supposed to know to do that? sort of things so we're gonna we're gonna hang out here for a sec we're just gonna um uh, we're just gonna chat for a bit like so you know how's how's everybody doing you having, you having fun like check out this like like this big skull thing like what what was this what was this like a giant elephant like with tusks or something like that's creepy right like what the heck is that supposed to be All right, well. Oh, little creepy eyeball thing there. Oh, come on. All right, we are, we're waiting for something to happen here. There, there is a very, there's an important event that happens. 
should happen any minute now. There it is. So yeah, Mordek shows up in his bedroom and just falls asleep. And that's that. Um, I mean, don't don't mind the cat in a bag in the corner of your room, but whatever, it's not important. Uh, we'll we'll save over no cat because now there's actually no cat because we just we got rid of him. He's fine. He's done. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna sneak into his room. <laughs> yeah, the cat's still there. Mordak lies asleep on his huge, horrendous bed. Okay. But he left something on the table here. Mordak's wand lies temptingly upon the small table near his bed. Okay, let's grab that. It would not be a good idea to bother Mordak right now. No, 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 we want that. We want that. Yeah. Let's get the heck out of here with that with that wand. All right, I'm going to save. Wand get. Got the wand. All right. So now we're going to take this wand into this over room over here. This room here is is Mordex laboratory. Uh and over here is the jar with our family in it. Tears come to Graham's eyes as he sees his beloved family and castle held captive inside a large glass bottle. Looking at his frantically waving family inside their glass prison causes Graham's heart to break as he realizes his current inability to save them from their terrible predicament. Alright, so there's nothing we can do about them right now. So, we need to figure out something here. We're gonna go up here. And there's a very strange device over here. Graham has no idea what Mordek does with this strange contraption, but it couldn't be good. Inside the lower portion, a foul-smelling liquid bubbles, while two dangling spiked gizmos hang on a massive yoke above a couple of flat iron platters. All right, two flat iron platters, foul-smelling foul liquid beneath it. Those are our only clues as to what to do here. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and do what needs to be done. Uh, we have our wand, and we have Mordak's wand. Now, as uh, Crispin has told us before, the wand needs to get to know us before we can use it. So we can't use Mordak's wand, because the wand chooses the wizard, remember? Um, and so, like, you know, we have our friendly wand here, but it has no magic. And we have our enemy's wand here that has plenty of magic. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that wand, put it on this platter. Take our wand, put it over on this platter. And foul-smelling liquid, uh, cheese is pretty foul-smelling, so let's throw it in there. See if that, uh, adds to the, adds to the mix. Graham tosses the moldy cheese into the machine's bubbling liquid. It's doing something. Oh! Oh crud. Oh the game crashed. All right, that happens. That happens. Okay. Uh give me a second. I'll get things back up again. Hold on. Okay, here we go. Graham tosses the moldy cheese. Moldy cheese back in there. Hopefully it'll stay together this time. So yeah, these older DOS games, I use this DOS box. So, it's just every once in a while something goes wrong. And it usually does happen in these, like, sort of cutscenes. Seems to be holding together okay. There we go. So, yeah, we're transferring the magic from Mordax wand to our wand. Sweet. Let's grab that wand. What's going on here? Oh no. I'll take care of you, you swine. Let's grab 
times is Juan back. Oh, it's Cedric. Hey, buddy, what's going on? Oh, God, no. What the? Ah, oh, he can't use his wand anymore. What have you done to my wand? That was the last of it. You think you can outwit me, little man? Ha! Let me show you a thing or two. Oh, God. All right, so he's turned himself into some sort of flying bug monster. Uh, so I don't know if you've noticed, but this is the, uh, this is the final battle. So, uh, let's try to figure this out. All right, we gotta use our wand. So we got a new magic wand. And these are the symbols that we found in that, ma in that spell book. Um, uh, so, uh, okay. This is like some drippy water. This looks like a man and a rabbit. This could be... I, I, I think this is supposed to be a person's face and then like another critter. And this is like a tiger. So we're going we're gonna to turn to a tiger because that seems the most imposing, right? There we go. So, tiger beats dragonfly. But, uh, dragon? How are we gonna deal with the dragon? Um. Shoot. Okay. I know it's not this one. It's one of these two. I think it's this one. Right, okay. All right, so that one turns us into a rabbit, and now we're too fast, and he can't hit us. You think you're so smart, don't you? Well, I've got you now. Okay. Say goodbye, swine. So he's turned himself into a snake, um, and it's got to be this one because I know I know that's that's the last one. So this one, I think this turns you into a mongoose. Which uh, oh yeah, man, you got, what was the what was the name of the movie? It, it, it was it's Ricky Ticky Tavi. It's the it's the he's like a mongoose, and he saves a family from like a group of like cobra snakes. It's like a, it was an old cartoon. It was an old it was an old animated movie. Oh shit. Um, fire. Uh, put it out with water. And that's that. We have extinguished Mordak. Like, that's like crazy to me that that's how you defeat the wizard as he turns himself into fire and then you put him out with water and then he's just gone warning this cartoon contains material that like, may be necessary cuz he was he like he was living fire and so you extinguished him and then he was just no more um uh, then we're going to watch it so we've defeated mordak and now we have to save our family now why won't you work the wand won't work Well, I did it. Mordak is dead. Dead? Are you sure? Maybe he's only trying to trick you. He's dead, all right. He turned himself into a fire, and I put him out with rainwater. He'll never bother anyone else ever again. But now I have a bigger problem. I don't know what to do about my family or my castle. I don't know how to turn them back to normal. After all you've been through, there must be a way. It's Crispin. Crispin, I have the solution to all your problems, <laughs> Graham. <laughs> it's uh, uh, what's what's the term? Why 
about you and Cedric were gone, I did some asking around. And I found out that your son, Alexander... It's the whatever ex machina, I forget what it's called. ...you made of turning Mordak's brother, Mananan, into a cat some time back. Obviously, this deed angered Mordak, who could do nothing about it, since this particular spell could only be undone by the actual perpetrator, your son. It doesn't take a great genius to figure out that Mordak took your family and castle in revenge to try to persuade Alexander to restore Mananan back to his old self. I did discover, as now I see, that your castle and family were miniaturized and imprisoned inside a glass bottle. I did some research and found the spell for turning everything back to normal. Now watch! All right, so Crispin shows up Focus. Focus. just in the nick of time with the exact spell needed to save our family. Uh, Valonis, my children, my joy knows no limit. <laughs> oh, Father, I'm so glad you're here. Aw, big group hug. Oh, Princess Cosima, how could I forget you? Come over here. <laughs> now, you might have noticed, uh, Cedric is <laughs> still laying on the ground in the corner. This is my wife, Queen Valenice, my daughter, <laughs> Princess Rosella, and my son, Prince Alexander, who started this whole mess. Yeah. All of you, this dang it. Is Princess Alexander from the land of the Green Isle. That boy Without ain't her, right. None of us would be standing here now. She bravely saved my life. My lady, I am deeply in your debt, and I will make it up to you. With your permission, I'd like to travel to the land of the Green Isle to see you. <laughs> what a creep. So yeah, uh, Prince Alexander is like immediately right. like, oh my god, this girl. Get on with business, shall we? Piggledy! Piggledy! Poof! Poof. Alright, so... Sure that your castle is right back where it belongs. Yep, the castle's back where it belongs. Everybody's full size again. Kasima has been saved. With my help, of course. And uh, Alakazoo, nothing else needs to be done. What about Cedric? Oh, right. The owl. Can't forget about that. Where is Cedric? <laughs> Over there. Mordek may have killed him. Is there anything you can do about it? <laughs> hmm. Let me think. There's a fucking uh, the yes. dead owl in the I corner. I know. Abra? Abracabara? No. Uh, Abracadora? Hmm. Now, what is that confounded word? Oh, yes! Abra! Cadabra! Of course! And there he is. Oh, Crispin! Cedric, it sure is good to see you again. Oh, likewise, I'm sure. All right, enough is enough. Let's get on with it. Okay, Cosima, let's send you home first. Wasn't that the land of the Green Isle? Yes, that's right. I can't wait to see my parents again. Goodbye, Alexander. Perhaps we'll meet again. You can be sure of that, Milady. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Oh, and she's gone. Like, <laughs> so... You send us all home, Crispin. <laughs> so it's that quickly. So, uh, Alexander has basically fallen in love with this girl in that many minutes of just, he, he just met her. But then again, I guess, like, it's possible he could have observed her from the jar, which is, like, extra creepy, but whatever. In, in the next, in the next game, they, uh, there's, um, you know, it, it, the next game is basically all about Alexander going to 
going to uh, see Kasima in the Land of the Green Isles. And there's the castle, and there's everybody. Well, there she is, our happy home, and we're all safe. <sighs> oh, oh boy! Let's go home, shall we? Yes, let's. Everybody's happy. Everybody's safe. Castle's back where it belongs. Cedric's not dead. And we got a perfect score. Uh, mostly thanks to a guy, but I have... I have seen this game a billion times, so... Um, so yeah, that was uh, King's Quest V. Um, yeah, this episode went a little bit long, but I wanted to make sure to finish it out. Um, yeah, thank you very much for watching this with... Uh, uh, you know, watching me play this. It's just... It's a very, it's a game that's very near and dear to my heart, and it's just very soothing. Uh, I don't know. I like this sort of thing, and it just reminds me of, like, you know, a nice, fun little D&D &D adventure or something like that, you know? Like, I've, I've always kind of thought of uh, putting together some sort of uh, tabletop adventure that's based on these games, at least in some fashion. It's just like a real old, like, classic fairy tale kind of adventure like nothing too crazy or like it's not like there's no crazy politics going on or anything like that it's just a you know a, a bad wizard shows up steals like kidnaps a family and you gotta go you know you gotta go and rescue them so well i mean that's a bit that's about it uh thank you all for joining um you know if this wasn't super entertaining i apologize but you know it's just sort of a little solo thing i want to do and I, I i do want to do this again with some of the other point and click adventure games um you know because they're not like crazy exciting or anything they're just sort of fun um and you know they're very nostalgic for me so i like doing them um and uh you know We'll be having, obviously, we'll be having more episodes with Griff and everybody later on. Uh, we just, I just needed to, you know, get something in for the holidays, just because, like, you know, it's a little bit harder to get everybody scheduled. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess that's it. Thank you so much, and uh, we will see you next time. Bye, everybody. <laughs>